Trisha Helfer in the studio right now. Oh my God. And boy, Welcome. are we excited for you. <laughs> we all love you from completely different fandoms, so I'm excited to break that all down today. Uh, but Van Helsing is what we're here to talk about. And I got to say, that first episode you premiered in on this, mm. you were so eerie. And yeah. you did such an amazing job. I heard you say that there wasn't that much time from when you were cast to when you actually shot. What was that period of time like? How long was that? Uh, I can't remember exactly, probably about a week. Um, sometimes you're cast and it's literally like the next day you're you're going. Sometimes you have more, you know, a little bit more time, maybe a month or something. But TV runs fast, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, but you have a, a, an iconic character. Usually when you're cast, you're not pay, taking on the mantle of a Dracula-type character. Like that True. Is, that's a huge one to undertake where you, like, I have one week to figure out how to portray one of the biggest characters of all time or do you train your brain to just be like it's just another character just in their role it is you know um it was important to i ha i was aware of the show i hadn't seen all the episodes so you know it was important for me to to watch as many as i could in the beginning so i started started in the beginning in the first season um and then i talked with michael eckland who plays jacob and abraham on the show and i I've, I've done you'd worked with him i've worked with him before and uh he said you got to check out season three episode eight you talked about there, and, and um, so little things like that help. If you think too much about you're playing Dracula mm -hmm. and you're the first female Dracula and all that, it can, it can be limiting because you can just sort of be paralyzing. Um, and then you just want to make it your own and, and look at, you know, I looked up the history of Dracula, you know, the Bram Stokers. I actually haven't read it. I bought mm. it for my Christmas reading. It's a um, little scary. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's Darina's <laughs> world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Darina just, oh, yeah. It's That's your thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. But I didn't have time prior to. Right, right. And, and, um, and then really just trying to fit in with the tone of the show. Speaking you know? of being the first female Dracula, what is, how did you bring that into the character? How does that change the character and the way that you move, speak, um, interact with people? Does it at all? I didn't want to make it about that. I think the most important thing for me was, sorry, I'm taking out my earrings. No, that's no, okay. No, no, no. Poking it's a good me move. with these yeah. headsets. I get it. <laughs> Dumb also, idea. We complain equipment. about these all the time, so yeah. you're good. Also, yeah. just showing them off because they're so pretty. I oh, love those. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to make too much of it in terms of Oh, it's it's female, and how can we make that? I mean, the show is is about Vanessa Van Helsing, mm -hmm. so it's already a very female centric show and and female um, empowerment show, right? Because she's she's a badass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, they had introduced also Kia and Nicole, Jack and Violet, mm -hmm. this season. Um, it, you know, uh, Kelly was pregnant, so she couldn't complete the season, and they introduced these two young kick ass women. So to me, it just sort of fit that, that Dracula was going to be female. Um, my biggest thing is I didn't want to make her look va 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 voom. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, I, was I that did... on the table? <clears throat> no, point? it wasn't. And, and I was sort of expecting it mm -hmm. in some way. And, and when I first had my discussions with the hair and makeup team, who were communicating, of course, with the production team, their idea was very uh, a little androgynous, mm -hmm. a little... Um, you know, a little bit more creature-like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that I was like, okay, great. We're all on the same page. Were you concerned that it was going to be the va 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 boom because of past experiences you've had or just that's the way Hollywood operates or why? That's so much of the way Hollywood operates, right? Yeah. Um, and, but knowing this show wasn't a, you know, wasn't, didn't lend itself to tits and ass, so to speak, right? right. Yeah. That uh, I, I, I felt I was in safe hands. But was you never know. Was this exciting for you for that reason? Because you obviously are a beautiful woman, like, and you played so many, you know, beautiful, sexy roles. And Dracula is one of my favorite characters. Obviously, being a vampire fan, uh, I love the look of it uh, of her. Right. I, I love that you're kind of more of like, like, like you said, androgynous but animalistic as well. Mm -hmm. Like, did you have any input there as to like how not just how you were going to approach the character, but the look of it as well? Like, are, were you excited to finally be able to do a character like this since you've been playing more like beautiful roles before? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And and it's it just sort of helps you get into hair and makeup and wardrobe. Everything plays a part. Mm -hmm. Right. I remember when I was doing. Uh, Battlestar Galactica and it, the Pegasus episodes where the glamorous number six was watching mm -hmm. Gaius talk to uh, you have to know the show to uh, oh I yeah we do okay yeah hair, I'm with that so. uh, talk <laughs> to Gina right who had yeah. been you know beaten up and gang raped mm -hmm. and tortured and everything and 
And when we were shooting on the same day and we were shooting the glamorous six first and then Gina and the makeup artist would, she's like, you're just, you're changing in my chair. Mm -hmm. You're not even on set yet. And you're changing in my chair, my physicality. Uh -huh. I started when, it, when I was becoming Gina, you know, the, the makeup strips off and the mm -hmm. wig and the, and the curls. And all of a sudden the bruises start coming in and the, and I just would start sinking and, and becoming smaller in her chair. And that's, you know, so similar with, with Dracula, mm -hmm. I think it would have informed if I had long curly locks mm -hmm. and red lips and uh, false eyelashes, it would have affected a little bit how you play the character. Mm -hmm. And so it helped. I, I, I felt a little creature-like mm -hmm. mm -hmm. with that hair and makeup. Uh, I mean, how could you not, right? Your, your eyes are blacked out with contacts. Yeah. You're contoured. To, you know, you're whited out and then contoured. And, and the hair was basically gone. It was just slicked back. Almost goat-like, like like a Baphomet or something like that, yeah. We actually joked that in the beginning, because she's sort of being born out of this portal, mm -hmm. that it was sort of after birth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess that. And yeah. I don't think my next episode in the season finale, they necessarily wanted the hair similar um, Going forward, uh, the hair will be different. So you just mentioned the season finale, which is on this Friday. Yes. But when you say going forward, what does that mean? That means if it goes forward, mm. um, there will be, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's been, of course, you talk, you know, if we're going forward, you know, what storylines and things like that. And. And I know there was some discussion of, yeah, we'd like the hair to change a little bit. Well, mm. it's taken them four seasons to get to this big bad. I would assume that what they're hoping to do right now is use this season four to set up season five with you as a, a series regular on this. Is that what you're hoping for as well? Yeah, uh, definitely. And it, it certainly is lending itself to that, right? Um, one, one of my issues I have with filming in general and TV is quite often if you're only in one or two episodes, you're not privy to the rest of the scripts. Mm. So I didn't know what the hell was happening on the entire season, mm. except for those two episodes that I wrote or was in. So you didn't know between those two? No. And I, when the show started airing, I was filming, I was away. And so I've just recently, I, I caught the first kind of a few episodes up to mine. And then just the other day, I caught the rest of the episodes because again, I was away filming a, a Hallmark film. And uh, I stayed up till three o'clock in the morning and I was watching everything up to the finale kind of going, oh, my God, if I had they're talking about me all the time. It's like <laughs> the elders are they're summoning me and Michaela's being killed like the, You know, I mean, I knew that Christopher had um, he was made into an elder for the for the summoning process mm -hmm. or whatever it's called. So I knew about him because that was in my episode. But everything leading up to it. Um, would that have informed decisions and choices you would have made as an actor if you had read those scripts and then? I think so. You know, I've talked to other actors about it, and some say they don't really want to know because if you're not there. But for me, it's more about if your character's talked about or certain things that they're doing. And, and certainly in Van Helsing, they were doing things to summon Dracula. Mm -hmm. And you, when I'm seeing it, I'm, I'm seeing more of the world that they're creating. And to me, that would help inform. I don't know necessarily for that next episode that I'm in, this, this coming Friday, the finale. Um, but yeah, on a, in general, I would much prefer, I'm one of the actors, I would much prefer to read all the scripts, even if you're not in it. This is kind of a strange question, but are you allowed to ask? Like if you are shooting the last one, I know that it's probably because you're a newcomer on a show that's up, been running for a while and you don't want to rock the boat and you don't want to be uh, a pain in the butt or whatever it is. But are you allowed to say, as a performer, it would be really helpful if I could see the other scripts? Or are you not allowed to say that? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, and it all depends on it depends on each production, how uh, how tight they keep things with with. The fourth season, me being in the seventh episode and then the thirteenth, I did. It was a little bit harder. And going back, I should have. I should have asked, and they would have been cool about it. They're mm -hmm. a very open, great production team. It's probably um, nerve wracking though to ask for like anything. I feel like it. It can be, yeah. But I would absolutely. Um, it's been kind of a little bit of a learning thing for even when I was doing Lucifer. It was seventeen out of twenty-two. The first time I wasn't in one, I didn't get the script. Mm -hmm. And I went to production. I'm like, guys, I want to read the script. But I was talking to a, a Derek Hughes, a, a writer friend of mine, just the other day. And I asked him. 
And he goes, no, again, it depends on how, and he does a lot of the CW shows, and they're really tight because they have a fan base that, like, is wanting to know every yeah. little thing. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he says, no, if you ask, then you should be able to be given it. But they assume, a lot of times productions assume the actors don't want to read it because they, if they're not in it, they don't want to waste their time. And also you're so, very busy. They don't, they, I'm sure they think that you're off working on other projects, which you are. Yeah, <laughs> but it, you know, it, it just depends on the actor. So I think you have to, that's something that I've learned is I have to communicate better. I expect that I'd get the scripts that I'd be, you'd want to read it, but there's a whole bunch of actors that don't want to read it, so.